many parents work very hard in Singapore. They want to give the children the best conditions. I hope to be able to highlight to them that apart from academics, that there are actually multiple pathways to excel. Two years ago, Minister of State Sun Treling started storytelling sessions for children over her Facebook page. She was inspired to do this after her own bedtime storytelling with her two young daughters. She has also released a children's book. She hopes the reading sessions will reassure children of their parents' love and help them make sense of life. Motherhood is something close to her heart. It is also part of her work at the Ministry of Education and Ministry of Social and Family Development, where her portfolio includes women's issues. We're meeting for lunch at the Kopitiam Food Court in her constituency in Tonga West, where we share a Thai steamboat set. What drives you in your work as a politician? I'm very fortunate to have the portfolios of education and social and family development. It gives me the opportunity to work with children, to work with families. And I think that many parents work very hard in Singapore. They want to give the children the best conditions. And I think many children in Singapore work very hard at their academics. I hope to be able to highlight to them that apart from academics, that there are actually multiple pathways to excel and multiple pathways of success. Because there are so many things that they can be good at, they should have confidence. And when they're able to find something that is interesting to them, that they want to pursue their passions in, that the pursuit in and of itself is going to be very fulfilling and meaningful. Do you think women face any stereotypes at work or even in politics? I think sometimes at workplaces, employers, they may be well-intentioned. If they know that a woman has caregiving responsibilities at home, sometimes they may selectively allocate work to women. One example, for instance, is travelling. So a well-intentioned employer may feel that since you have young children, then maybe he should not make you travel so much. But from an employee's perspective, you may think that actually having sufficient exposure is important in their career advancement. I wouldn't discount the fact that there may be perhaps more discriminatory type of slurs in workplaces. Sometimes people may not be aware that the language used may be inappropriate. Do you think anything can be done with regard to women? and the sort of maybe prejudices they face? I think having frank and honest conversations between employer and staff is important. Normally, regularly, and also during appraisals. So that it is not left to chance and possible misinterpretation. Then both parties will feel that it's fair. I think sometimes at workplaces, we don't have these communications. And the result of it could be that women could walk away feeling discriminated against. And the employer would somehow feel that, actually, I didn't quite understand what my employee needed. I think it's important to have those honest and open conversations. I think that is something that we should all aspire to work towards. On Facebook, you read stories uh, to your listeners. How did that come about? I often create stories and share those stories with my children. It started because one day, my child quite liked the story and said, oh, you should share it with more people and I decided to put it out on Facebook. Quite a few people liked it. Nah. And I came across uh, an illustrator, uh, Joseph Lee, and he was interested to do the illustrations. I was at the same time very involved in the work for Kid Start, which is a national program to help children zero to six years old. And I thought that I could publish the book and whatever people are willing to donate to, I could use that to help Kid Start. Nah. And also at the same time, I donated those printed books to the Kid Start beneficiaries. Ever since I started the storytelling, people have been recommending books to me. People mail books to me. People write me emails and, and tell me what book to look out for. It's very satisfying. Yeah. But I read a good book and I find that it is something that I could share with other children. Their parents would read to them perhaps or join them uh, while listening to my storytelling. And that they could find their own meaning out of it. A lot of children's books, they don't tell you at the end of the day that this is the message. You kind of learn about it along the way and depending on your thoughts and your station in life you may draw different conclusions and I think that in itself is very magical and very meaningful. You have two daughters, five and eight. Yes. What do you hope for them? I hope for them to be happy and confident 
and to be curious. You know, to always find something that will make them wake up the next day with joy and excitement. You don't sound like a tiger mom, are you? No, no, not at all actually. Probably, probably a danger about being too relaxed. <laughs> Thanks very much for having lunch. No, no, pleasure.